I've been encouraged over the past few weeks as I've done these devotions, and I've heard many ask if we're living in the end times. And to be honest, from the time I first remember the gospel proclaimed uh, in the early 60s till now, I've heard and wondered that myself. I must admit that we're experiencing something that many generations have not experienced. Matthew 24 gives an account of a conversation with Jesus and his disciples about the end times. Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. They were pretty proud of their buildings. Do you see all of these things, he said to them? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one, every one of those stones will be thrown down. So as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. They said, tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. As with mine, I'm sure you've heard of conflict, wars, disease all of your lives. Sometimes we may become overwhelmed and bombarded with the hopelessness in the world. Now, believer, is the best time to draw near to Christ. None know the time when Christ will return, but also never has human people, as a human people, have we become more distant and detached from God. While I'm quick to state that going to church does not give you or grant you eternal life, that comes from a personal relationship with Jesus Christ as Savior and Lord of your life. The alarming statistics show that church membership is going down in all generational categories. So for people born prior to 1945, they are down from 77% attendance to 68%. Baby boomers, those born from 1946 to 1964, down from 67 to 57 percent. Generation X, those born from 1965 to 1979, down from 62 percent to 54 percent. And the millennial generation, those born from 1980 to 2000, the data shows that they only 42 percent attend church meaning that 58% do not. Now, this data is from 2018, so if the trend has continued, I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this. So why do I bring this up? Well, obviously, the world needs Jesus. Our country needs Jesus. Our state needs Jesus. Our community needs Jesus. Our comforts have been removed, and many of us are uncomfortable with our new normal. Mainly, as I've stated before, of which I'm at the front of the list, we've had things removed from our lives. Family, sports, eating out, birthday parties, hunting, fishing, group gatherings, travel, gymnastics, dance class, cheer group. You get the idea. We've been relegated to our immediate family with little to no outside contact. What if God has allowed this to take place in order for the body to become strong in preparation for meeting the needs of those percentages that I mentioned earlier? We as a human population have grown dependent on our own abilities, not on the grace, strength, and power of God. The folks that I mentioned earlier, that high percentage of unchurched, they need Jesus and hopefully a loving church family who can guide them in their walk with Christ. 
We are not able to rely on each other right now the way we have in the past. We must rely on God and his strength in our individual lives. Isn't that the way that Christians should live each day? Even when our lives are lived with abundance, shouldn't we live our lives in accordance with his will for us? As Brother Trey and Brother Mike have spoken many times about reading God's word and seeking him in prayer, this should be a constant in our daily lives. Lives that have become filled with uncertainty. Well, I choose to believe that we as the body will come out stronger and more beneficial to those who don't know Jesus as their Savior. Maybe taking moments to love and care for people who in February we may not have looked twice at. Maybe this is a time that ours and other churches' outreach programs have been so enhanced by the technologies of the 21st century that we may reach people who would never initially come into a church, but may come across a YouTube video of a devotion, of some music, or a message that God will use to prick their hearts. As we prepare for the great day when our lives return, let us not immediately go back to what we had before. As most of you have probably seen or heard, I do the initial labor for Becky's vegetable garden. I'm not super skilled or passionate about it, but it's something that helps her and that she loves. Not much in the garden appeals to me, as for the most part, I've never eaten vegetables. Now, some of you are probably saying, I always knew that there was something a little off with that guy. And believe me, my folks tried, and I have tried many, many times to no avail. That's not the point. Here's the point. I prepare the ground and sometimes assist with the planting. But I don't get the reward of the harvest. Becky or our grandchildren harvest. And the blessing comes from those who will eat from the garden. Very similar to the walk we have with Christ. I've literally spent hours and days with people loving on them and pouring into their lives. But someone else may get the opportunity to see them come to the Lord. Just as there have been times when others have poured into people's lives and then I would have the opportunity to lead them to Christ. Sometimes we plant, sometimes we sow, sometimes we reap. Now is a time, a great harvest, for a great harvest in Christ Jesus. Many have had the distractions that have come and have become idols and little gods to them removed. And now they're seeking the one true God, Jesus Christ. Galatians 6, verse 7 starts off like this. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked. He will not allow himself to be ridiculed, nor treated with contempt, nor allow his precept to be scornfully set aside. For whatever a man sows, this and this only is what he reaps. For the one who sows to his flesh to the sinful capabilities and capacity, to the worldliness, to disgraceful impulses, that individual will reap from the flesh ruin and destruction. But the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. Let us not grow weary or become discouraged in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap if we do not give in. We are to sow even if we don't reap. Sow into people's lives. Get out of your comfort zones. Speaking to myself, get out of my comfort zone no matter what it is. Sowing comes in many different forms. So right now, it could be calls, writing cards and notes, text, and when we're able, comforting with a word or comforting with a hug. For the past few months, we've had the term flatten the curve spoken to us from numerous media sources. We have to begin preparing to reverse the drop in the Christian church growth and begin reaching outside 
of our comfort zones to get the unchurched and to present the gospel of Jesus Christ to them. And in doing so, reverse the fall. After all, after all, isn't that why we are still here? Praise God.